So, Al Heyman, premier boxing champions. Y'all said they were gone. They were dead. They ain't doing shit or whatever. Shout out to my boy, The Phenomenal Show. Put me up on this article of Al Heyman and premier boxing champions and their plans for the rest of the year and um, kind of what they've been going through as they switched over from Showtime to, to Amazon Prime. And let me tell you, man, I couldn't be more excited for what I read in this article. We're going to talk about it in this video. Smash the like, sub to the channel, share the video, turn on your notifications, catch me live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. I'm also live every Sunday morning with KQKC Boxing Network. Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Join the channel as a member. Drop super chats and super thanks when you come by the videos and the live streams that we do. And hit me up if you want to debate. Knockoutboxing86yahoo.com is the email address. Listen, bro. The more fights, the better. As a boxing fan, number one. Number two, the hate that Premier Boxing Champions and Al Heyman get to me is just crazy, bro. And I don't know if it's because of Al Heyman um, being who he is or the things that he's done in boxing to, to get power and, and usurp people and the roads he's been able to take and avenues he's been able to take to just play the game at a higher level than his contemporaries in terms of getting around the Muhammad Ali act and like really acting as a promoter but not having to call himself a promoter using guys like Tom Brown, Samson, um, Manny Pacquiao promotions to kind of act as the acting promoters and matchmakers and shit while he kind of calls the shots from a high level view like a general manager type shit on the way that he was able to get fighters paid and kind of his business model, bro. I don't know. I don't know why, bro, but... Well, I know why from, like, Bob Aaron, right? Oscar De La Hoya, Eddie Hearn, Turkey. I can understand why there will be some tension there because they're competitors, right? They want to do better. They're all in business to, to make as much money as possible, and they want to do better than Al, right? Um, so I get it from them, but from fight fans, I don't understand, like, the hate or the disdain or it seems to like really want to wish for them to fail right and i don't get it because when you look around like the cards this year that have been the 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 best cards right the zoo fundora card the um tank frank card the the um canelo and Munguia card the the um crawford madrimov card all of those have pbc footprints all over them even though pbc for their own promotion and you know their own prime, the rollout has been slow. But we'll talk about what was said in the article a little bit down the line. But so so far in 2024, they had their hand in all of the big cards and big fights that you've been able to witness, all the memorable moments um, that have went viral in boxing. They've had their hand um, in a lot of them, right? And then when you even go back to last year, 2023, the, P the year that PBC had was well documented they gave you the biggest and the best fights last year as well ben benavidez versus kayla plant benavidez versus demetrius andrade um canelo versus um jamel charlo was a big fight even though it was one-sided it was still a big fight that, that did very well spence and crawford um was a fight that they delivered for us sent cool boy steph over to to fight monster in a way that was a damn good fight that they did tank davis versus ryan garcia obviously um was a huge fight that they were able to do. Um, so I don't, and then obviously Tank had this fight with Hector where that card was stacked. You had Andrade, you had Boots in it, you had a lot of fighters on that card as well. So they had the best year in 2023. They've been very integral in 2024. And so I just don't understand why a lot of people, and they've showed a willingness to work with multiple promoters on multiple occasions. In 2023, Cool Boy is the PBC fighter that they sent over the top rank. Uh, Ryan Garcia is a Golden Boy fighter. They did they did the deal with Golden Boy um, for the Tank and Ryan fight. Um, shit, the, Deontay Wilder Fury. They 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 did business with Top Rank. And then this year alone, Turkey Island. They did their own shit with uh, Tank and Frank. They did some joint shit with Canelo and Munguia. They did their own shit with Tim Zoo and Fundora. They did the um, they they sent fighters over to Turkey for um. For, for his Riyadh season card. They helped Riyadh season build a very good card. They um they did the Canelo and, and Ber they're doing the Canelo and Berlanga card, um, which is a is a really big deal, right? They were about to do the 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 um tank in, in, in Loma card, doing business again with top rank but Loma pulled out of the fight. Like they like I, I just don't get it, bro. They they they've showed a willingness to work with everybody, but yet fans shit on them for the in-house shit, when if you really just look at the facts, they've done more business cross-promotional 
than any other promotional outfit in boxing, bro. Just the fact of the matter, but whatever. So um, you have that. Um, but this article talks about some great things coming down the pipe for boxing fans um, and some great things for Premier Boxing Champions if it all does come to fruition. But um, they are planning on possibly, first of all, Al Heyman is back in the fold. Um, they explain the, the, the slow rollout with Prime Video with two things, which the Al Heyman situation, I totally understand, bro. Your family got to come first. But long story short, he had a huge family emergency that he had to deal with. He wasn't really in the fold for the first part of the year, but he's been with the day-to-day -day business a lot more now, and uh, they're expecting things to go way smoother. That was one thing. And then the other thing that I think is also understandable, Prime Video had to get used to doing boxing events. Um, as the article states, which I agree with, boxing and doing production and stuff for boxing is much different than doing football. You know the schedule way ahead of time with football. That shit is rinse, wash, and repeat. In boxing, shit changes like the weather. You know, a main event can get pulled. Um, a fighter can pull out. People get injured and shit. Boxing is just a different beast. So Amazon Prime is ramped up. They've gotten better and more comfortable um, doing boxing events and shit. So they're expecting this year between September, September, October, December, September, October, November, December, they're expecting four to five more events, which will put their total at, um, with some of them being on pay-per-view and some of them being free, um, you know, on demand, which I think is great, right? So that would be the, the, um, Tim Zhu Fundora, Tank and Frank, Canelo Munguia, um, Canelo and Berlanga, and then four more fights, that's eight fights from March to December, that will be eight cards that they will put on um, for the first, you know, nine or ten months of the of, of their deal with Prime. So that will be right on par. You know, if you spitball that to March and next year, that'll be right on par with the 12 per year that they said they were going to do as long as they finish the year strong. And then we have a couple of cards in like February and March of next year. That's going to be right at that 11, 12 mark that we all expecting from them per year and then ramping up and doing even more next year. So. If they end the year strong and close out the year strong, you can see another strong year from them, and that will give us more boxing. You got four or five cards coming from them on top of what we already know the zone is doing to end the year, on top of what we got with top rank um, coming that's going to end the year. So I couldn't be more excited as a fight fan. And one thing that was also um, – so I don't understand – um, how if you're a boxing fan and you don't be gang banging for promoters and shit, I don't understand how this would be anything but good news to you. I don't I don't see how this could be anything but good news to you. The free fights that they promising about to start coming. They said at least uh, two of them probably going to be free. And then they're looking to do at least two pay-per-view cards. Um, and then maybe even one more with Manny Pacquiao and... Um, and Mario Barrios being that one, I think Pacquiao and Barrios is the one that has the potential to get scratched, though. Right, because Pacquiao looked like trash in his exhibitions, but we'll see. We'll see how that how that goes. Um, what else happened in that? Oh, uh, big big news, right? Um, one criticism of PBC is that they got all these fighters; they don't have enough dates. I agree with that, right? But in this same article, PBC has been in deep talks and they're having very good progressive talks with Warner Bros. and Discovery. And Warner Bros. Hold on. Okay, yeah. And Warner Bros. Discovery, they're the company that owns um, TLC, own Food Network, Cooking Channel, HGTV, TBS, and TNT. And I think that um, if they get that deal done, Warner Bros. Discovery is looking to get that deal done because they just lost basketball to Prime. And if they get that deal done, you can see fights on TNT. Or maybe even TBS, but I think specifically TNT because TNT is going to be looking to replace their basketball content with some other sports content. And so that deal is looking like it could come to fruition. And then you'll have two networks again for, for PBC where you have Prime Video and you have TNT. And then you can get those 200 plus fighters that they got under, uh, under contract can start getting more and more and more active. And I think that will be great, um, not only for that company, but for the sport of boxing. When we get to have uh, boxing on ESPN, TNT, um, the zone, prime video. I mean, how is that bad? And then 
it gives more dates. So if you get 12 dates from Prime every year, let's say TNT does 10 to 12 dates, 24 PVC cards, it's a lot more activity from a lot more fighters, man. And then you can kind of use the TNT shit as like your showtime on regular, you know what I'm saying? Regular showtime or whatever. Run your, your free cards through there and then you can make the prime prime shit your pay-per-views if you want to. You know what I mean? And then you that's how you can start getting shit back to back and they can start having two cards in one month or you know what I mean? Kind of it, 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 it can just get really good. So I think the article is very promising. Shout out to Phenomenal Show for sending it to me. With the moves that Premier Boxing Champions is making in a net worth of over six hundred million dollars, and only being around, they only, they've only believe it or not, they still haven't even been around a decade, bro. To be making this much noise only a decade in, shit could get shit could get real nasty real quick, bro. And it can get real, dog. And they could they could really keep gaining market share if their fighters are able to continue to win and um, become stars and put on big events. I'm excited for this news, man. If you're not excited for this news, I don't know what to tell you as a boxing fan. But y'all let me know what y'all think, man. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.